Yo everyone, what's going on? Curryway here, and in this video, we are going to talk about a Minecraft speedrunner who changed the game forever. As many of you know, Bastions are a huge part of how players speedrun in Minecraft 1.16. There are four different types, and it's important to identify which Bastion you're looking at quickly, along with knowing where to get the gold blocks so you can move on with the rest of the run. But when 1.16 came out, no one knew anything about Bastions. In fact, people saw Bastions in the Nether and would get upset because it wasn't a fortress and runners just assumed there was nothing useful in them. But one player named T underscore Wag saw Bastions and knew they could be game changing, knew that there was so much untapped potential that there had to be a bigger purpose for the structures that take up half the nether spawns, and boy were they right. Today, we're going to take a look at how exactly they created routes for Bastions with literally zero resources showcase what other game-changing strategies they've come up with in 1.16 and other Minecraft category speedrun versions, and hopefully highlight the technical Minecraft speedrunning community as a whole. I hope you end up enjoying this video. If you do, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Feel free to also check out my Twitch channel, where I speedrun live streams four times a week, along with other fun variety content on the other days. Right now on Mondays we're playing Pokemon, and on Wednesdays and Fridays we're a part of an SMP called Poke SMP, which is a Pixelmon server with other Pokemon creators. I've also just recently set up some public social media accounts on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, which I'll leave linked in the description below for you to check out. And of course, be sure to stay up to date with TWAG in the description below as well. I'll leave his Twitch and YouTube there for you to check out. Let's get into the video. I was thinking about different things to watch during this. I, I looked back at my first PB. It was a 41 minute run. It was like three days after 116 came out. It's a Bastion run though. I think the first ever Bastion run. Really? But it's, it's terrible. It's like an eight minute Bastion split. I don't know what's going on, but like the ideas are there and it was only a couple days after 116 came out. So it's kind of nifty. That's insane. Literally the first Bastion run. Did you just like, did you just, assume they were good or did you just kind of have like no idea what you were doing and we're like ooh, new structures i want to use it i was pretty convinced they were just broken i was i was really surprised no one else thought along the same as me but yeah right right as i saw the loot tables and bartering and stuff i'm like dude these are these are gonna change the game forever it's nuts you are so ahead of the game holy cow i guess one thing i want to ask is i know for a fact that like your four original like two minute bastion videos I know those took like months of planning. There was no tutorial or anything on how bastions work or where the gold blocks are, or how spawning or any anything like that. How did you decide that it was such a big undertaking that you wanted to do and what resources did you use? Yeah, this is where my I could show my uh, bastion world. So yeah, so I really learned about bastions and the new uh, like 1.16 update only a couple weeks before it came out. And uh, I went to the Minecraft Wikipedia article and thank goodness for the uh, selfless people that, that put those together because uh, on that article, uh, before the version even came out, there are uh, structure names um, and details about the exact blocks and loot and all those structures. And so I just went into this world. Um, this is my Bastion world. I actually made this on the 116 snapshot uh, wow. a long time ago. And I just went in the structure files and you can use these structure blocks in uh, Minecraft to generate uh, structures as long as you have the correct name. So from the Minecraft wiki, I just went in here, loaded all these, and then I made a world with all of the structure segments that had at least one gold block and at least one chest. And just hours and hours and hours of pouring through these, uh, these structure segments because it, it wasn't well documented at all it's a very confusing like bastions are just kind of a mess they're really hard to figure out how things connect and stuff in treasure room here's just the bottom treasure segment and here's a bridge and then here's one of the ramparts and before you know there were no guides and everything it was just really really confusing so it, definitely hours and hours in this world and uh months and months just practicing doing actual runs making sure this stuff is kind of viable so yeah a lot of time <laughs> Did you tell anyone like early on that this is something that you wanted to do or was it just like kind of a solo project all in the beginning and it was kind of just figuring it all out on your own? I told uh, my friend a little bit who kind of actually got me into speedrunning, showed me a bunch of videos and world records and really just got me fascinated by the whole idea. But that was that was kind of it. I just explored all this on my own, um, bounced some ideas 
off of a few friends. It was kind of surprising how not that many people thought uh, the same that I did. They just kind of said, well, bastions are too confusing. We'll just trade a couple gold ingots, you know, and, that, and that'll be it. Towards the end of those last four months, there were some more some more believers. K4, Y4, and Fyro were probably two of the, two of the biggest believers that came on and started to see what I was doing uh, and really made things more publicly available, you know? As soon as Bastions came out, I was like, oh, there's there's a big difference between a Bastion run and a non-Bastion run. And it's that you need an Iron Pick or TNT, right? And so just doing Villages, like, just doesn't cut it. And so you kind of have to revolutionize the overworld, which changes the Nether, which changes the whole run. And so I think I kind of jumped on Ocean being the best solution to pair up with Bastions well. K4 and Fyro and everyone else were coming up with ideas in parallel on their own. Like Alt Labs is uh, an initially a K4 idea, which I think is super smart. It's uh, really resource efficient and uh, conveniently plays into these Bastion ideas. Yeah, we all we all kind of came together. K4, Y4 sent me an invite early on with this uh, strategy and routing Discord. And uh, yeah, all, all these ideas kind of mesh into one and, and they happen to work together kind of like puzzle pieces. So like early on, there was hypermodern back then. And then now we have, we've gone from two minute bastions to one minute bastions up the game on magma ravines in an insane amount, just a whole bunch of other things. Like, did you see it getting to this point, like this fast? And if you did, how do you even see it getting optimized and improved even more? So I think. Uh, a week before 116 came out, I was talking to my friend and I was like, these bastions are just, they're absolutely going to change the game. I mean, speedrunning is never going to be the same. We're going to see a sub 20 within a week and we're going to see a sub 15 within a month. I was, I was positive. And um, I was kind of let down because it took, it took a while. Uh, bastions were really, really tricky and uh, speedrunning took a while to catch on in 116. People were hesitant at first because of the RNG elements. Uh, so after about a month, 116 came out, I kind of reevaluated and I was running bastions and my bastion splits were maybe four to five minutes. And I was like, man, it's, you know, it's really tough to get, you know, a, a sub four minute bastion. And this is after a couple minutes of like really training pretty hard. And, uh, you know, when other people are out here trading five ingots in a minute and finishing their runs. So I was like, well, maybe maybe 116 is only going to be like sub 18, sub 17 at best. And then again, I was proven wrong. <laughs> again, uh, people came out with insane times uh, doing all sorts of strategies. So it didn't surprise me too much when uh, these bastion ideas and monument ideas started to take off because I, I had known for a while they were pretty amazingly broken structures. Uh, that could really accelerate a speed run. Yeah, I'm, I'm just shocked every day, faster and faster runs coming out. I mean, we're doing this interview and in, what was it yesterday? Xylanox had almost world record. It was like tied with it or something. I mean, tied world record, yeah. Crazy. So um, I want to say 116 is, is fairly close to optimized and the world record is going to come down a little bit more, but it's not going to be too crazy. Are you a sub 10 believer or no? So here's the thing. There's, there's two questions, right? The first question is, is it possible? And absolutely something is possible. Uh, we've seen people do theoretical runs. We've seen SSG be sub three minutes. I mean, SSG is insanely fast. Yeah. So yes, it's possible. But then the, the next question is, do you think it's going to happen? Which is kind of your opinion of, of the collective ability of all speedrunners playing right now, how much time they have to devote to the game. Uh, I personally don't think so, because if you look at the kind of curve of world records over time, it takes about 10 times as long as the previous world record to shave three minutes off the run uh, around there. I mean, someone could go through and do detailed math or something. So if you're just kind of looking at the way things have gone, I think it would take maybe years, maybe longer than that, just for players to get better and better and more people to come in the game. But then again, there could be a technique that just shaves like a whole minute off the end fight tomorrow. And all of a sudden sub 12 is easy, you know? Personally, I think sub 10 is just outside of the amount of play time that I would expect. But if someone came up with a sub 10, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at this point, no. How fast, I guess, just like in general, did you realize like 1.16 speedruns or or any Minecraft speedruns were just like 
not optimized at all whatsoever like was it instant were you like what the hell are these people doing or did you really have to like get into it more um yeah i i would say i knew right off the bat 116 it's funny coming in from a perspective of someone that really doesn't have any speedrun experience or any any minecraft experience coming into 116 because it's like like a fresh set of eyes you know i think if i had played 114 and then gone to 116, I would have been like, eh, I don't know about Bastions. You know, I would have been at the same mindset, but just starting off when Bastions were introduced um, gave me just a completely different mindset that I was like, speedrunning is a blank slate. I can just play it however I want. Forget about all this other stuff that people do like villages and things. I'm, I'm just going to play it my own way. The real interesting thing that happened, 116 came out in the middle of June. And in July, Nice Twice got world record, uh, 2108. Yeah. And he got like an instant fortress and traded like five ingots and got all of his pearls. And it was such a crazy run, of the, absolutely absurd run. I was like, man, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if my way of playing is actually any good. Like if someone could get a 2108 this quickly, like what else can they do just with these same ideas coming from other speed runs? So, if you were worried about the nice twice run, what was your thought process when the Corb run came out? Were you just like, oh my god, is that were you still confident after the Corb run, or were you were you second guessing yourself again after that? Um, definitely, definitely second guessing myself. I'll, I'll be honest, I hated the Corb run. <laughs> Anyone that was on my stream or knew me when the the Corbino sub fifteen uh, one sixteen run came out, um, oh, I just despised it because it was so. You know, Corbinos was saying the whole time, 116 is not fun because it's RNG based. Yeah. And, you know, the way people were playing it, I, I totally agree. It's it's not fun at all. Trading five ingots and getting no pearls and resetting and trying for hours and hours to get a single fortress, it, it's boring. It's not fun. And so when when Corb got his world record, I was like, this this category's dead. I hate this. <laughs> like I just I've been I've been trying so hard. And at that point, I'd gotten Bastions down to like maybe a three minute Bastion was like really, really good. And I was like, I, I can't compete. I just can't do it. So uh, really discouraged for a while. But luckily, um, some other things like Simply's Tournament and K4 and, you know, a lot of people asking questions in chat made me, you know, reconsider. And I was like, all right, I'll, you know, we'll keep we'll keep doing this. I still think Bastions are really, really good. And I know, obviously, most people probably know you for Bastion stuff. Um, like the Bastion guy, but you've obviously done a lot of other things in literally every version. Are Bastion still your favorite? I know 20 or not 2014, 1.14 is like your baby as well. Uh, so which which is your favorite out of those or or just anything that you've done optimization wise in general? I switched over here to my uh, my monument world. This is the original world where I used to uh, study ocean monuments and their patterns and structure and stuff. Um, Elder Guardian Mining Fatigue Range. So yeah, Monument Sebastians are both, I just love them so much because they were just structures that like were so largely ignored for months. Monuments have a special place in my heart because I think um, one of my viewers, Spike Brownie, uh, it just bugged me on, on doing monuments like multiple times at the beginning of 116. And I kept saying, no, 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 you get mining fatigue. Oh. Yeah, the guardians hurt you you don't know where the gold blocks are it's just i don't think it's a good idea and like four or five months later <laughs> someone else bugs me in chat and i'm like okay fine i'll go loot you know I'll see where the gold blocks are and after like after like four hours of studying them i was like oh i, I can't i can't believe this I, I can't i can't believe they're they're uh consistent reliable fairly easy to do and rewarding i was like how has this thing that I've been swimming around in the ocean for so long been so good and I just I just didn't know about it. So monuments were such a huge breakthrough and really if monuments were never discovered, um, you know, magma ravine portals, I don't think ever would have been discovered. Dandelion suspicious stew, we kind of came up with that on stream just because, you know, going out in the ocean and getting three iron for a pick is great for bastions but it leaves you with like no food and so all of these strategies came to be really because of bastions to be honest monuments were actually discovered to be routable because of bastions weirdly enough um so 
I think those are those are my two babies. I, I really love discovering those. I think my favorite one though is the Magma Ravine door portal. I have to give credit to Fyro. Fyro was the first person who figured out you could use the magma blocks at the bottom of ravines to, to make a portal out of it. He he loves his fence gates though I despise fence gates. So and it's so simple and so like obvious now, but I just I love how simple the design is and how for years no one no one even considered it. this this could have been done for years in the game because monuments were never a thing, because shipwrecks were never a thing, these bastions were never a thing. Uh, just largely ignored. So that's my personal favorite one. And I'd say I would I would enjoy 114 as as the best version if it weren't for five minute lag. Did you expect to have this much of an impact? Not only revolutionize one, but just revolutionize all three and just come in and be like, yeah, no, you're all stupid. Here you go. I did honestly expect it for 116. Um, after the first like couple weeks of people like kind of ignoring bastions in general, I was like, there, there's so much unexplored here. I have to keep investigating. Like, I, I just, people have to be doing this wrong. There's, There's gotta be better ones to play. Versions 114 and even 1.7, not even on my radar at all. I never thought I would even play those versions or try them. Honestly, I started playing 114 as a joke because I, I like the ocean so much in 116. I'm like, what if you could do the ocean in 114? You know, I could get gold and, and emeralds and iron from the ocean and you can actually trade all, all three of those to get emeralds in total and trade for pearls. Pirate strats in 114 was actually just a meme that I played on stream for a week or so. <laughs> and it went really badly <laughs> because it takes a lot of shipwrecks and buried treasure to get enough emeralds for pearls. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Uh, it takes a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, eventually uh, tried out monuments and that just completely changed the game for 114. So yeah, 116, I'm, I'm very happy with where it is now. I'm happy that people have changed their mindset from the old ways of be really mechanically skilled at the game and get really lucky to uh study and think on the fly like that that's huge in 116 now yeah. people have really shifted their mindsets to like not just being mechanically skilled and lucky but being really smart <laughs> that's i i love that 116 is being played that way 114 and 17 uh kind of just messed around with them and accidentally just stumbled upon new strategies and things that could kind of change the category completely still still young with 1.7 uh but there's there's actually a lot we're finding with uh pre 1.9 that's unoptimized so it, it's that's still not yeah there's i, I kind of was like ah well you just kill enderman and get pearls like that's it there, there's nothing you can explore but again i was super wrong we're finding tons of things that people in pre 1.9 can do better what would be your favorite thing that you didn't make like that that someone else created maybe you had like a small hand in or maybe like none at all but like what would that be i used uh i used a respawn anchor on on the dragon once so i i did uh figure that out it was very early in 116 it was like a month in 116 i used a respawn anchor to finish the dragon i thought it was the coolest thing ever but i never came up with like the actual you know the standard method people use now so it's kind of bummed that i didn't get the didn't get the credit on that one but <laughs> that was a fun one. The the thing I'm, I'm working on right now is a, a 1.7 one cycle. Really? People, yeah, people think a one cycle in pre 1.9 is just kind of a meme and it's never going to happen. But oh. that's what people thought in 114 and 116. And here we are. So I'm, I'm really, really hoping for a 1.7 one cycle. We have some ideas right now. Um, it, it, it might not be possible, but it would be really cool if it did. I can kind of plug myself, although, uh, you know, I, I'm T underscore wag on YouTube, a T underscore wags with a Z on Twitch. But um, yeah, I just kind of, I, I just kind of mess around, just kind of experiment. Uh, you know, I do some category extensions and stuff, but honestly, if, if anyone's looking for someone new to watch, someone really fast at speedrunning, if you go to the speedrun.com section, there's, there's a little uh, thing on the side called streams. You can click on that. You can see people that have a couple viewers that have insane times. Go support them. Yes, um, go. I mean, it, it means the world to people that have only a couple viewers in their streams. 
and really good times that are really grinding to um, get a couple of viewers in there supporting them. So a lot of big hotshot streamers now, like Curry Way. Dude, I, like there's <laughs> there's some big ones, like Gavin G, big one that you should go check out. Maljack, huge one. Ninja Brain, yep, like these yep. are all people with Ninja sub Brain, yep. 16s. Like they're insane. Yeah, they're so good. So yeah, go, I mean, go check them. Watch more Minecraft streams is what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I absolutely agree. But yeah, dude. Thank if you if that that's 1.71 cycles is a pretty good note to end on. That is <laughs> that is absolutely insane. But yeah, if if you don't have anything else you want to say, dude, I that that is a that is a fun interview for me. I I had a blast with this. That was sick. <laughs>